Hey guys, welcome back. Orbomb here, bringing you the next week of the tournament results in Japan as far as Digimon goes. Uh, I didn't do the previous week because I figured, you know, BT4, BT4 was like fully revealed last week, right? So um, the previous week was just more BT3 tournament winning decks. We kind of went over the gist of it last time, two weeks ago. Uh, so I figured doing that week would have been worthless. But this week is exciting because this is the first week or the first six days, I guess, of tournaments results in uh, Japan for set four, the Great Legends set. I'm excited about it because uh, I, I took a look-see. I didn't look at the decks yet. All I've done was look at the... Um, Look of like how many decks have won, and it looks like yellow is really dominating with the most amount of wins this week. So I'm excited because yellow is one of my favorite colors, and you know I'm all about that chaos mon right now. We've been doing a lot of testing on the side. Also, new webcam. Um, hopefully there isn't that much lag. I'm still trying to work it out. Uh, so consider this like a test video at the same time. But you know who cares about that? We're gonna go ahead and look directly or start looking at all the deck lists uh, that have won this week. I'm going to try to make this video shorter, but, you know, I can only do so much. Also, if the uh, if I'm not looking directly at the camera anymore, it's because I had to move around my uh, my screens a little bit. But we're just going to go ahead and get right... Oh, I don't want the link. I just want I just want to open open that. So we'll start looking at blue. There's three winning blue decks. Of course, this does not count hybrids. Hybrids are at the end. And sometimes hybrids are a little bit iffy. Like, sometimes you could, like... Pretty much say a hybrid deck is a blue deck and stuff like that. But yeah, dude, with this new... I should probably open up DT DTCG review as well. Not uh, Digimon Card Dive is what I meant to say. Because some of these new cards are, like, even crazier than I remember. <laughs> so this Beowulf Mon guy... Hopefully that can all load up while we do this. The Beowulf Mon, the Digimon that cannot be attacked or uh, destroyed, is kind of wild. But we did learn that through official rulings the other day that... You can, you actually can't attack the same turn you play down a tamer. So say that you have like five memory, right? You did play down Matt and then you play down Beowulf Mon. Uh, unfortunately, you still you still can't attack with this guy due to official ruling. But blue is looking like it's bringing ba brought back. This is this is the kind of blue I do like though. It's like a quote unquote rookie rush, but it's like it's like a it's like a champion rush almost because you're playing all of these guys. Um, all these two drops, all these, like, of course, the one of the best cards in the game, uh, Vmon over here. Also, I need to make sure that you guys can see everything on screen. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hold on, guys. I want to make sure you guys can see all the cards. Uh, there we go. That should be good enough, right? There we go. Less me. I'm so I was just trying to work out the camera settings, but okay. So you got you got eight tamers in the deck, so you can still evolve from these guys, and they're pretty much two drop Digimon um, since you can't attack with them. But unlike two drop Digimon, they can't be attacked, which is the biggest benefit of playing down uh, two uh, these tamers. Is that unlike Digimon, they can't be removed from the field through any means. Like obviously, uh, <clears throat> you can remove things like you can use things like Terror Force. Uh, there's a lot of cards that can decrease DP to destroy you. So being able to evolve from a tamer has the benefits of pretty much being indestructible until you evolve into it, which is kind of crazy because you can just let a tamer sit on the board until you're ready to evolve. And there's a lot of good tamers. Like this one will let you look at any of the top three cards and add a blue um, blue Digimon or green Digimon or both into your hand. This one obviously gives you memory, which is nice. So this is probably the best card to play, honestly, because it's two drop, which is, you know, the equivalent of a Lekmon and all that stuff. Uh, let's take a look at some of the cards they are playing, though. Yep. Oh, that's probably why. That makes a lot of sense. There we go. Let's take a look at some of these blue cards that they're playing. Of course, they are playing Lobomon, Beowulf Mon, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is just uh, this is a good card, but more importantly, this is the Beowulf Mon I was talking about, not that's Lobo Mon. Beowulf Mon has jamming and it can't be attacked. Um, it can't be it can't be destroyed essentially. While this Digimon has hybrid form or blue tamer digivolution card, this Digimon cannot be attacked. So it can be destroyed, obviously, through other means, but it can't be attacked, which is kind of crazy. So you have jammer here, jammer here, guys that can reactivate your jammer. So this is essentially like honestly, it might just be stronger Imperial Digimon. Um you have the level four here as well, which I don't remember what that one is. Uh, here it is. Is it level four? Do they have? Do they have three level fours? How come I didn't know this? Uh, <laughs> Garurumon, uh, return one of your opponent's level three Digimon to its owner's hand when attacking, which is kind of absurd for a level four. I thought this was a level five. This is a level four. That's crazy. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna you have a little bit of disruption in Garurumon. Uh, 
Garuman, Garuman, Garuman. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. So it has. Hold on. How many does? It has one level four, two level four. Does it have a third level four? No, this is a level five, right? Bro, that's not fair. So they have Lobamon, Garuman. Oh, Beowulfmon is level five. <laughs> okay, there you go. That's that's what's going on. All right. <laughs> That makes more sense. But anyways, yeah, that card's busted. Uh, <laughs> it's what I was trying to say. Uh, other than that, how many tamers do they have? Or how many level 3s? 4, 8, 12, 14. And then they have the tamers. So, what is that, like 20? It's almost like 20 level 3s, but 14 of the level 3s can't attack. They have Hammer Spark. They have a bunch of level 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16 level 4s. All cheap. Probably just for draw. I'm not really sure. Maybe just for the evolving into this guy but can this guy have this guy doesn't have the effect or not that beowulf mon doesn't have the effect unless he has like a tamer below it so probably not to evolve into the level five wherever he is um what is this card oh this is the this is the new hybrid digimon as well so this is it's like 16 right 14 plus 4 12 plus 4 14 plus 4 18 all right cool so this is interesting i like this deck though this is cool i like the i like the concept of this deck a lot up next is probably what is this what is this oh this is just imperial Dramon. okay so standard imperial Dramon. anything new in this deck probably not i'm not seeing anything new it's got omega mon uh yeah nothing too new here nothing too interesting i mean like obviously imperial Dramon is really really cool uh honestly though as far as like the imperial Dramon strategy goes Obviously, you have piercing in here, which is like it's its own beast, right? But I really like this list a lot more for the like whole jamming, uh, the jamming strat, just because you, this dude can't be destroyed is crazy. Because like now you you're like you're like playing on a clock when you play against this deck because if you can't attack this guy, then um, you have to destroy it through other means or you have to like rush your opponent before they can rush you, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and then we have this deck list. It's got the. Uh, let me do this one more time. Hold on, guys. Oops. There we go. And I'm trying to move my face cam so it's out of the way. Uh, it's got that Gabumon that removed its evolution sources. So another Imperial Dramon list, but only blue cards. Uh, don't know why. Oh, that was weird. He's like hiding his blocker, and whatever this card is. So he's hiding. He's hiding cards. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to reveal the secret text, even though that's the blocker. I have no idea what that is though. Anyways, moving on. Oh, that's all the blue decks. Cool. All right, so that's blue. Um, yeah, that's all the blue decks that have won tournaments recently. So let's go ahead and move on to the next color. Let's move on to red. Red has taken a break. Uh, we're only gonna look at the BT4 list. The BT3 lists are uninteresting to me. I'm gonna quickly close out of these. <clears throat> and the sequel BT4 has to stand. Is it more of just the same? It's probably more of just the same, right? But it could be with some of the new cards I've been thinking of. I've been thinking of a lot of really fun, unique lists to come out of BT5, but this is just more Omega Mon. So yeah, standard Omega Mon. We talked about all in the previous uh, in the previous video where we discussed winning tournament list. So uh, I'm not going to go too deep into red because we've already discussed this. This deck is strong. It's it's ridiculous. It's busted. If you are an American player and you're looking to like have cards that you can play in the future, uh, hold on to your hold on to your red cards because red cards will forever be good. Oh, I'm just trying to make this work here. Hey, green, perfect. Now green. 22 so i lied to you about yellow i meant green i don't know why i said yellow but where's the bt4 list here we go oh my goodness oh, look at all that bro <laughs> green is ridiculous right now so ridiculous that i think i'm gonna do green last uh, honestly let's go let's go from let's go backwards now um we have two black lists that have one so let's take a look at what we can find here there's uh i'm not really sure what's gonna be good in black uh besides like uh this whole what's it called um dark Dramon list but they're playing this new card which i feel like i really underestimated when i talked about it last time so we're gonna actually talk about it real quick but it looks like they have the new chaos mon uh the black version of chaos mon in this list uh, they're playing you know some stuff nothing too crazy here they have the inheritable blocker which is probably my new favorite card they have this new card as well so let's go ahead and take a look at these new black cards um uh, like this guy, for instance, which, by the way, that artwork is amazing. Blastmon has security attack plus one, 1300 power, but uh, when attacking your opponent may choose one of their unsuspended Digimon, then forces Digimon to attack instead. So this is one of the strongest level sixes in the game, 
Uh, I don't think there's anything that has more than 1300 power um, that's a level 6 currently. Uh, but unfortunately your opponent can choose to uh, can choose uh, let, them, let you attack one of their Digimon, which is very rarely ever going to be the case. But this does have security attack plus 1, so they have to be aware of that. But if you give this guy the inheritable blocker, um, which is what this guy is right here, um, that could be really, really dangerous. Other than that, they have that new the new option card that kind of makes this card ridiculous, right? It's this one right here. Um, one of your opponent's Digimon get 3,000 uh, power until the end of the turn. So you put this on Blast 1, right? If this Digimon has 1,600 power, the Digimon gets Blocker. So it gets Blocker until the end of your opponent's next turn because uh, it should have 1,600 unless somebody has reduced your power. Um, it gets Reboot, so you can attack perfectly you can be perfectly content attacking uh because then you'll just be a blocker during your opponent's turn and it has security attack plus one so now you now you have security attack plus two with reboot and blocker so for only two memory it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> honestly it's 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 kind of it puts in a lot of pressure i'm not too sure how amazing it is uh but let me take a look at this other level five black card that i don't remember what it does this guy right here so this guy has digiburst one uh, one of your Digimon get plus 2,000 DP until the end of your opponent's next turn. So, oh, I see. So you play this card to kind of reach over Omnimons whenever you attack. Because uh, whenever this guy attacks and your opponent has an Omnimon on the board, you want to be able to destroy it. So having access to this is almost like having more of these guys. So I, I can see that. That's not bad. Uh, he's playing a little Commandermon package. He's got Commandermons here and here. But I'm not really sure why else he's playing Commandermon, honestly. Uh, other than that, you have Chaos Mon. So the Black Chaos Mon, uh, I really thought that card wasn't super amazing when I looked at it the first time. Um, let's take a look at what it does. When this Digimon, uh, when this Digimon attacks and deletes, so it has piercing, right? Uh, when did you evolve and suspend this Digimon, then this Digimon can attack and evolve Digimon. So here's the problem, right? And at least for me, whenever I play, whenever I think of this card in Black, it's still good. You're still a 1400 piercer, so it's not a bad, bad card at all. Uh, and like you get to unsuspend yourself which is not bad either so that way you don't be damaged so it's a good way to protect your Digimon uh, but the fact that you're a 6 to evolve in black means that you're not going to be able to get this win digivolving skill because um, like I'm as far as I'm aware unless somebody in the chat unless somebody in the comments wants to correct me uh, this skill only works the turn you digivolve so once your turn once once it's your turn again after digivolving this guy then you no longer get this benefit of being able to attack an unsuspended digimon um which is really cool but if you can't use it then what's the point that's at least that's what i'm thinking so i'm not i'm not really sure uh, I, i'm unless i'm wrong about that but i don't think i am uh yeah i don't know i'm not really sure maybe he's just maybe it's just a good card but i would play more of this honestly because at least I can like clear board clear, which is really good in black since black since against black decks you like to go wide uh, to deal with their blockers. But anyways, that aside, let's move on to the next list. Is that Diabormon? This guy's playing Diabormon. This guy won with Diabormon. I wonder why. What makes Diabormon so interesting? I guess like less Omnimon in the meta means Diabormon has the potential to swarm the board and be even stronger, which is really cool. So like there you go. There's your reasoning. Uh, less Omnimon in the meta means Diabormon gets to take gets to roam free. All right, moving on. Purple, my one of my favorite colors, with a uh, four, only four, which is unfortunate because I feel like purple had the most amount of like Ws in BT4, with especially with Jack's raid being a card. And the one thing I'm noticing is that less people are playing uh, the memory level three Digimon, the ones that prevent you from gaining memory outside of Tamers, which I feel like is going to be really strong because uh, Hammer Spark is still around, and now we have Jack's raid as well. Uh, but this list is not playing Jack's raid. This list is just good good old purple it's got it's got anubismon for haste it's got titamon i'm assuming to turbo out into millenniumon because he is playing two millenniumon and he's playing three metal gurumon so obviously anubismon plus metal gurumon really pair well together anubismon lets level three digimon that come onto the board attack that turn and then when attacking you get to summon a level three digimon from your trash so essentially every time you attack um if you have Anubismon and Metal Gurumon on the board, you essentially have three attacks because you get to attack with Metal Gurumon. Uh, even if you die uh, or get deleted, you summon a level three from your trash. Anubismon gives that level three haste to attack and then this can attack as well. 
Uh, of course, you're asking to have two level sixes on the board, which is not always the easiest thing in the world, which is why I don't like this combo style play. But when you can pop off, you can pop off, which is really, really cool. All right. Next list is uh, Purple Rookie Rush from the looks of it uh, with Piedmon. Well, I mean, it's, it's this is just Piedmon Purple, honestly. I don't, I don't want to say anything else because it doesn't have any other level sixes. Uh, so you just play a bunch of level threes and level fours, but with Piedmon until like as a late game, almost like an option card. Uh, it's got some revival options and some deletion options, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, oh, we have two more lists actually. We have this one, which is the list I'm really excited about. This is Purple Metal Guruman, uh, Black Metal Guruman, which is such a cool card. It's Digi Burst. Uh, I like Digi Burst a lot. And then you have Lilithmon to bring back your Tamers. Now that like Black has ridiculous Tamers, none of them are playing Jax Raid yet, though, which I'm very surprised about. I feel like Jax Raid is such a shoe in when it comes to these purple decks. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I mean, it looks like I'm wrong so far. Uh, Trump Sword. He's not. They're not playing the new purple stuff either. I mean, to be fair. This is this is still like the first few days of set four, so you gotta understand that not everybody has chance to get these new cards. But this is looking like standard good stuff purple, and then we have this list, which is a, quite a few purple lists. I'm not really sure what the best one is, uh, which is the one that we're supposed to look at. So look at all of them. Uh, oh, never mind. Oh, this is just more of the winning stuff. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll look at that purple. We'll look at that other list later. But yeah, this is just standard stuff here. Um, you can use you can. This is just cool. I like this card a lot more than I like Piedmon, honestly. Obviously, you have to evolve into it, which is its own problems. Because uh, you pretty much only have... Well, you have a few level 5s, honestly. But this has Digiburst, which, can, which means you get to use these cards for free, which is kind of crazy. Because if you can Digiburst twice and you have two Nail Bones, you essentially get four Digimon on the board. So that's wild. <laughs> which is actually kind of funny, because you can use the first Nail Bone uh to get whatever's in your trash right and then you dump more cards and you can get the cards that you dumped back from the trash using the second nail bone uh but this is why i like lilithmon a lot in these lists because you get to put back your uh, option cards to reuse them not really sure how handy it is because you can just hold on to your option cards but at the same time it's pretty cool i like it a lot i really like this card i'm really excited to play test with this card i haven't actually played tested with this card yet i've been play testing with anubismon a lot because i really like the anubismon yellow strategy um but once again it's kind of hard for me to say like this is still the first week right so we can only look at what is good uh so far but ooh, we're going into yellow now and yellow if you guys don't know is pretty hype uh because now you get the benefit of shine greymon strategy which is dp reduction in a in a big way but now you have it in a more controlly way as opposed to like the late game like i'm gonna bring back this whole game after losing all my guys you now have the whole like i'm just gonna slowly control you throughout the game uh by deleting some of your digimon slowly using dp reduction i'm just gonna open up all of these lists real quick uh i'm really excited about this because i haven't seen any of these lists yet uh and the, like i said yellow is my favorite i think chaos one is such a cool addition to yellow and i really like uh some of these newer digimon like war Greymon. like for instance this deck right here it's got Valdermon, which I'm really on the fence about Valdermon. I'm not sure how much I like Digiburst in yellow. Uh, but it's not bad either, still. We've got the new TK. Um, let's see. Four War Greymon, which is super strong. I love this card a lot. Uh, being able to reduce by 6,000 by attacking is really, really nice. Uh, oh, and you also get to draw one by taking it from your security. Uh, they've got the recovery Seraphimon as well as two Valdemon, which is like all your Digimon lose 4,000 power, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a look here. And then we have this new tie. Uh, if you have three or four fewer security cards, all your Digimon get 1,000 DP. When your opponent's Digimon is deleted by dropping to zero DP, you may suspend the Tamer to get one memory. So it's a 1,000 boost all around, and then you can gain memory here and there by deleting uh, by deleting Digimon, which is which is pretty cool i'm not really sure how much i like it but it's there valdermon is cool it's got digiburst three so you can only use this digiburst once and all of your opponents you want to lose 4,000 dp which is really really strong i think it's a good card versus particular matchups it's almost it's pretty much the same thing as like uh volcanic german but it's a digiburst strat so i'm not too sure how much i like it but it's cool nonetheless i've tried it and i was thinking to myself that i'd rather have this card be a, a slash angemon almost every time i played it because at least with slash angemon you're not you're not forced to digiburst you can just hard play some decent level sevens like mistymon 
you have War Greymon when attacking once per turn by adding the top card of your security stack to your hand, unsuspend this Digimon, and one of your opponent's Digimon get minus 6,000 DP. This thing can attack twice, reduce DP by 6,000, and take your own security, which is like the bad part, but sometimes it could be good just because you could draw an extra card, which is really, really cool. Um, it's got a new blocker. Uh, only the one of blocker. He's got... Uh, how many level eight? How many level fours is he playing? Where's his other level fours? Oh, here he's playing the one that reduces DP by a thousand when attacking. A few level threes, five plus eight. There we go, thirteen. Uh, a few level fives. He's playing the one that recovers your security when did evolved, which I assume is really good paired with the uh, Warp Greymon. It's such a risky strategy, so that's probably why he's playing all these security recovery cards. Um, I'm not too sure what this is. I can't really tell. Let's take a look at good old Digimon card dev as always. Wait a minute. Do not zoom in. I did not ask you to zoom in. Okay, but don't be that zoomed out. Cool. <laughs> is there a dude that looks like that? I don't see it. So I'm not too sure what that is off the top of my head. It might be the... N no. Hmm. I can look for it later. I'm sure it's not that big of a deal. Rise Greymon to Digiburst into some Tamers on the board. Uh, other than that, it looks pretty cool. I like it. He is playing. Oh, is this? I don't know if these are his prizes or these cards he got from playing. I know this is at least a prize, but I don't know about these guys. It's cool though. I can appreciate it. Another list. This is Shine Greymon with War Greymon. So it's a Shine Greymon list. But he's only playing. He's not playing that many Tamers. Uh, this one doesn't. I guess you can rest this dude, but if you rest it, you don't get the effect, right? And you're forced to rest everything when digivolving. So he's playing 4 plus 3 at 7. So he's playing 10 tamers, but he cannot use this effect stacked with Shine Greymon. Also, Shine Greymon was nerfed to where you can't draw every single time you delete a Digimon. You can only do it once, right? So that's cool. He's playing 8 blockers, which is another reason why I like yellow so much is that these are the best level 4s in yellow. Like 2 blockers plus another 1 drop. Or you can do the ones that like let you reduce security or let you reduce DP when you attack, which is kind of nice. Uh, some decent level, uh, some decent level sixes. Another f or fives. I mean, another another five drop level five. It's three to evolve, but it's three thousand more power, which is cool. Uh, a bunch of level fives here that can drop tamers. It's through Digiburst. It's through Digivolution. Um, this is probably still better, right? Because at least with, like with Digiburst is a lot more difficult to pull off. Uh, but with Digiburst, you can technically do it twice. But I'm pretty sure with this Rise Greymon, uh, I think it's Digiburst two. So that you can probably only do it once, right? Because you have two, three. Yeah, you can only do it once. So, unless it's Digiverse 1, which I know it's not. You can only do it one time, so it's whatever. Uh, oh, this is the same as from earlier. Close out of that. There we go. And, uh, yeah. Looks pretty interesting. Nothing, nothing blowing my mind yet, though. Uh... I was really hoping to get my mind blown. This is something that I feel like is really underestimated and I can't wait to tech into more of my yellow list or more of my like just list in general, right? Is the haste Akumon. Uh, not because you can to just you get to just like <sighs> excuse me guys. I did just wake up, so <laughs> not because you can just play this down for five and attack, but no, because you have the ability to put it on the board using cards like Angel Woman. Who's, uh, whose effect lets you... Uh, let me actually see if I can pull it up for you guys. Um, Angel... I don't know why I'm in all caps right now. Um, okay. I don't know why that worked. Ange, is it is it Angie? I'm surprised. Okay. I don't know why it's doing this. What if I just type woman? Woman. There we go. So this one has the effect where when did you evolve? Okay, when attacking, it's an inheritable effect, of course. If your security is three or less, play one level three or less yellow Digimon from your hand without paying the cost. So you get to play the the Bushi Agumon, right? You get to play the Samurai Agumon onto the board using the inheritable effect of this guy or this lady. And then boom, you get to attack the same turn because you have haste or rush or whatever it's called. That's really strong. Another card I really like in this list is this guy right here. Uh, War Graumon, but War Graumon is kind of busted with Slash Angemon in my opinion. It's it's pretty good with these other cards too, but War Graumon has Digiburst, and it's probably my favorite Digiburst in yellow. Uh, 
just one of your for Digiburst two, one of your Digimon lose uh, one of your opponent's Digimon lose uh, four thousand DP. So if you combine that with Slash Angemon, you get your opponent to lose twelve thousand DP, and boom, you pretty much beat every Mega in the game. Um, so Digiburst, uh, one of your opponent's Digimon get minus four thousand DP for this turn, and then whenever you evolve this into Slash Angemon, if you have three or four of your security, his Digimon gets eight uh, one thousand DP, so that he gives you nine thousand DP. <coughs> mm, excuse me. <coughs> and since slash Angemon is so weak, being able to beat over Digimon is really nice. And then you can evolve that again. <sighs> it's a Chaos Chaosmon, um, the level the, uh, the 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 yellow Chaosmon. So, in like, if you have, let's just say that you have like in a perfect world you have six memory, right? You get to make your opponent lose four thousand, then eight thousand, and then seven thousand twice. So. Uh, it's pretty good it's, <laughs> it's pretty strong um so this is probably one of my new favorite level threes as far as like in the strategy i like which is the whole dropping down security here and there he is playing the new one that lets you uh reduce what your security by one to gain two memory which is really strong in these whole decks that are just like trying their best to get themselves a three security to abuse effects so i do like that a lot a few tamers here and there Quite a few, honestly. I can see the reason why you'd play them, though. Like, TK is still one of the best tamers in the game. And then if you're, if you're purposely going down to 3 security, then I don't see why you wouldn't play this card. So that's pretty good. Uh, Clavis Angemon, which is probably the one of the better Digimon with attacking skills. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Cl um, Clavis. So if you're at, it's only 10,000 power, which is the downside, but when attacking, if you have three or less security, one of your opponents is you get minus 6,000 DP until the end of the turn. So this is, I don't know if this is better than War Greymon. Uh, having 10,000 DP is kind of, is kind of bad, but not having to lose security is pretty good too. <laughs> Just to attack, which is, you know, handy in its own right. But this is probably my favorite list I've seen so far. It's got all the stuff I like. All that good stuff. I like that good stuff. Uh, I'm, I don't know what this card is. Let's take a look. It's, it's probably one of the newer cards. Just kidding, it's not one of the newer cards. What is it? Um, let's find out. Because uh, I can't tell just from looking at it. Six cost option. Uh, is this it? Oh, it's Eden's Javelin. Okay, Eden's Javelin, draw one card. One of your opponents, you might get minus 1,000 DP for every one card in your hand until the end of this turn. That's just a good removal card, honestly. Yellow has this thing where it gets a lot of cards in its hand, uh, especially when you combine it with... Uh, that one card that lets you draw every time you reduce security by one, the Labramon. So uh, when you play yellow, you tend to realize that you get big hands, so this card becomes good. But it's also a dead card a lot of the time, too, because if you draw it early, it's eh, not that good. But it is a plus one draw. It's six memory, though, which is why I'm like so hesitant about it. That's why I barely ever play it, but it's still a really good card. What's well, good? Bushi, Anjum, Bushi, uh, Bushi Agumon, super cool. Really like that guy. Uh, not too sure how often I would play it, because I'm not too sure how often I'd play this Angelomon. Uh, but if you're playing things that can let you summon level 3s from your hand, this is just an easy addition, honestly. Especially if it's consistent. Mainly if it's consistent. Now back to this. Look at this. This is a clean picture. Dude, just this guy for having good quality camera. See, this is an example of why you would, should, you would play Bushi Angelomon. Because Magna, Magna Angelomon's effect lets you do it whenever you attack, which is way more consistent. And you get the benefit of adding security. So that's really, really cool. Um, other than that, nothing too crazy here. Another Angelomon. Not really sure what... Oh, that's the other one that lets you recover security. It's like a promo or something. I don't know when we get this artwork, but I hope we do. Uh, a nice solid seven blockers. Uh, this card again. <laughs> it's just so strong. But I'm not really sure. Like, I, I get it. It's like one of those things where, like, you can make really big plays. This is a cool card because, like, it's like a game-ending card, right? You get to remove a whole lot of your security. But... In the process, you get to essentially try to win the game in one turn, because each one of these is plus two memory, which is a lot of memory to be gaining. Um, so this card seems to be like a mainstay in yellow. A lot of people in Japan are playing this in yellow. Um, it does pair pretty well with this guy, because it gets to attack. And if this guy gets destroyed, uh, you gain three memory as well. Uh, my only concern is like the fact that you're attacking with this, so you're going to be losing... You may be losing security. This is a may effect, which is why it's not mandatory. But you may be losing security already. Uh, and then you're going to be losing even more security. But I guess it pairs well with this guy. With this lady. Um, so we might have to experiment with some like with some like teetering yellow. Uh, where you just like... I like calling it teetering because you're playing on the edge, right? Like you're, you're playing on the edge. You're losing your own security. 
and you're trying to gain it. So like you you have to be really good at this game <laughs> to mess around with this strategy. He's playing one Seraphimon here. This is just Shine Greymon from the looks of it, yeah. Four, eight, nine, nine tamers. Only one of these guys, which is surprising. I like this guy a lot because it's a two drop, so it's easy to just throw down. Uh, but when you have like eight blockers, Shine Greymon feels better than ever <laughs> because now you have now you're less concerned about being blocked. Um, is he playing all of the red guy? Hold on, am, am I missing something about? Oh, did I? Oh, I just exit out of uh, uh, Digimon Card Dev. That's my bad. Do I, am I do I have a misconception about the red guy? Let's take a look. When attacking one of your, if you have a tamer, oh, when attacking, if you have a tamer, one of your opponents is lose minus 2,000 DP for the turn, which is a good effect for sure. Did you burst, um, um, I guess this is a really good, this is a much better inheritable effect, honestly. Um, when this card is trees yellow Digimon, blah, 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 uh, Digiburst 2, uh, you may play a red or yellow tamer with a play cost of four or less from your hand without paying its memory cost, but it's a Digiburst 2, right? So you can only do this one time because you have, you can get rid of two or three or a three and four, but because you're level five, you can't get rid of yourself, right? So, all right, cool. So you can play one tamer through Digiburst, but have a better inheritable effect. Maybe that's the reasoning. Um, but then if you don't, if you can Digiburst, right? If you hard play a level four, and then you evolve into a level five, then you can't use the Digiburst skill at all. So uh, it's, I don't know, feels pretty, feels pretty weird to me at least. But you know, what do I know, right? We got some good old yellow. Ah, there it is. There's Slash Angemon. Really showing itself off. Of course, they've got one of the best yellow cards in the game. Shakuman being the super anti-rookie rush card. But with Champion Rush being a thing, uh, maybe maybe it's not as good anymore. Um, this looks pretty standard. Chaosmon Slash Angemon. Uh, Balder guy. This guy, which is actually a pretty interesting card. Uh, I don't remember what it was though. You're, I'm not used to seeing uh, yellow option cards. It's a three to play, right? Boom. There we go. Uh, this guy right here. I'm pretty sure he's not bad, right? One of your Digimon get my one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus three thousand DP. So it's just another minus three thousand DP guy. It can stack with your other effects. That's not too bad. Giving them security tech minus one is just a bonus too. Um, it's a one of tech, so I guess it's kind of like a one of swing card. Not too bad at all. Um, very few level fives that are like, I guess this is a pretty good level five to be fair. All right, cool, moving on. Um, nothing too crazy there. More of the same Bushi Angemon slash Angemon Kentarosmon, which I like a lot. Uh, I think Kentarosmon is a really good stall card. And the fact that you could almost, a lot of the time you can purposely destroy him, right? By like crashing into a Digimon with the same power. So you get to trash one and also delete something else because of your effect, which is really cool. Um, more bushy, more bushy boys. Not too bad. Moving on. I'm trying to make this video shorter. It's only been 33 minutes, so excuse me if I'm rushing. I really like the Slash Angemon into War Gramon combo. I think it's one of the better combos in the game. Um, just removing Digimon until you can make your board strong enough to just start swinging. That's really cool. Um, more bushy, more bushy boys. Uh, I'm not really sure how you summon Bushi Angemon though. Is it just what this card does? Like gives you enough memory to play down Bushi Angemon and attack the same turn? Uh, that could be a reason to play it. You really only need two of these, right? Because if your opponent gives you like one memory. I guess if you start with four memory though, if you have one of these, you have enough to play this down and attack at the same turn. So that's already a pretty nice combo already. So Bushi Angemon having its place if you play this card. So it looks like that's what they're doing here because they're not playing the card. I guess they're playing Magna Angelmon, but like that's about it. Magna Angelmon's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty cool card. Uh, they're playing a Lotmon as well. All right, Salamon. All right, cool. Moving on. What do we have here? It looks like War Greymon is really pick is really like the most popular card, but this is my favorite list so far. Look at this list. It has all the combos I like. It's got the Slash Angemon, Chaosmon, and War Graumon, all at four counts. Um, no Bushi Angemon, no Bushi combo, but that's fine. This deck isn't the Bushi combo deck. It is four TK, such a ridiculous card. Um, it's got six blockers. 
the se seven blockers here. Surprise, he's playing. Oh, I guess it makes sense because like you could be afraid of the Omnimon uh, Alter S, so you want to play more of the six thousand blocker than the five thousand blocker. I get it. I understand. It's all cool. Uh, a bunch of the good stuff. No Labramon. Since you're reducing so much power, you figured you'd play Labramon, right? But he is playing three of the Salamon that reduces power when attacking, which is really strong. The Recovery Salamon, he's still playing four of, which is quite a few Salamon, honestly. And you have to be 3,000 power or less, which I guess pairs well with the uh, War Greymon, so I can't complain too much. Uh, that's actually really cool, right? You have so you you know what maybe maybe this War Greymon is like way better than I think it is because you have Salamon, you have Angelomon, um, you have Seraphimon, but Seraphimon is level six, so you probably don't want to play that. At least not as many, if any at all. Uh, but reducing DP by six thousand, being able to attack twice, and recovering that security you lost using Salamon or Angelomon. It's all about the control, right? But you want to draw a lot of cards, which is why I'm surprised he's not playing Labramon. Uh, that's pretty cool though. I will take it. Uh, here's that list we were looking at earlier. The list, we, the the picture with multiple lists on it. Um, oh, this is a different one. This is playing Jack's Raid. Uh, I'm not sure what placement he is. I think this might be third place. Um, we'll look at green last ones again. Here's the yellow list. Uh, yeah, War man, War Greymon man. People really like this War Greymon card for Jack's Raid. I am not seeing Bushi. Jack's raid with no Bushi is kind of crazy. This is just, I guess, to use this. He is playing this War Gramon though. War Gramon into War Greymon into Chaos Mon with Slash Angemon being in as well. With a few uh, Angemomons and uh, two of the Salamons that recover security. Man, these lists are kind of crazy. I'm excited. I'm excited to test some of these lists, man. All right. And now. Before we move into hybrids, which uh, we'll just take a quick look at all the hybrid lists. There's probably not too much to look at there. Let's look at green. Uh, because holy crap, look at all these green lists. Actually, there might be less green than there is yellow. Uh, let's count. Let me at least we got one. Because we had a, we looked at 11 yellow lists, right? Two. Or is it 10 yellow lists? I'm not too sure. Okay. Now, green is cool. We have uh, Nidhogg Mod, which I once again I mentioned in the video, but I think Nidhogg Mod is crazy because uh, it's like it's it's a really ridiculous removal card because it puts them all on the bottom of the deck. So, uh, if you're afraid of Nidhogg Mon, you can't ever attack unless you're going to win the game, right? Which is like the ridiculous part about uh, green now is that it's so hard to play against green because you never know when to attack and when to just like chill. Because Nidhogg Mon means all your rest of Digimon go back to the bottom of the deck. Uh, Hercules Kabuteri Mons mean you can just get rested uh, and then attacked. So it, it's become it becomes this like it becomes this big mind game that's really difficult to work with. Uh, so let's see. That's a lot. Of, that's this is a ridiculous amount of list. I lied. This is way more than yellow. All right, let's, let's just start taking a look here. Um, so, oh yeah, and of course they have Chaos Mon, uh, the Piercer one. And because you are a green deck, you have the Evolution card, so you can evolve this for one, which is ridiculous. A few Nidhogg Mons, a few Kabuteri Mon, so it's exactly what you would expect it to be. You have all the good cards. This can attack unsuspended Digimon. This can put suspended Digimon back into the deck. This can suspend your opponent's Digimon and also have Piercing. This can deal with Omnimons. Like, this green is just ridiculous, man. Once again, if you're looking to invest into this game and you really want a good deck that will stay good for a while, uh, green is your is your boy. He's playing the new Lilymon. So let's take a look at what that card does, because I don't remember. Uh, I remember it's, it's like decent, but I'm not too sure how decent it is. Uh, it has Digiburst. So it's already, I don't like it if you're playing the Dogbot or Kabuterimon already, but... Uh, uh, just the Digimon blah, 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 suspend when you play Digimon. So it's another suspending card. Uh, maybe it's not that bad then. Uh, maybe it's not that bad. You can attack with Titamon. Actually, I kind of like it now because this guy's playing Titamon, right? So you play this, you Digiburst, do your shenanigans, and then you attack them with Titamon. So this is a cool concept. Uh, I still think the Megas are like the best part of this deck. Uh, this guy's playing both Chaos Mons as well. The one that can pierce, uh, that can restand, pierce. And unsuspend Pierce as well, which is really really cool. Uh, 
Yeah, green's absurd. Green's absolutely absurd, bro. And it stays absurd too. Uh, we need a we need a nerf green, man. <laughs> All right, more of the good stuff like I mentioned: Hercules, Kabuteri, Nidhogg. Uh, this guy le lets you rest, so it's kind of like a a new version of Puppemon. Because usually when you play Puppemon, right, you're only looking to rest one of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, so this one will rest one of your opponent's Digimon, and it cannot be unsuspended. But all your opponent's other Digimon can be unsuspended. So it's not, it's, it's pretty good for just stopping one big attack, which in the current meta is the biggest deal when it comes to attacking. He's playing this card, which is once again, I'm surprised people aren't playing a whole bunch of this card. But if you're looking to evolve your guys for cheap, you can only play so many uh, evolution cards, you know what I mean? So it makes sense to me. Uh, you don't want to play too many that are just going to force you to play the evolution card. Then you have all this download green stuff. Not bad, pretty standard. Playing four of the of this guy and four of this guy. Okay, no Nidhog, which is fine. Nidhog is just a tech in my opinion. So like you could choose not to play him, but he's still a really really competent and really strong green deck. So that's pretty cool. Um, Sarasmon back in action for download green. Uh, Sarasmon is still a really good control card, just like the best resting card in the game if you're looking to play rest. So nothing too interesting there though. I'm trying to look at all the new stuff. More Sarasmon, uh, Nidhogmon, Chaosmon. Sarasmon, I don't know. Sarasmon might be better with Chaosmon. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Nidhogmon once again. Digiburst four is. I mean, this card's crazy. I cannot stress how crazy this card is, especially combined with Sarasmon. Your opponent will just get all their dudes rested, and then you can Digiburst and put them all back in the bottom of the deck. So it's just a big board clear. It's really ridiculous. Uh, all right, more of the good stuff. The green Kabu Terimon gives one of you guys security attack plus one. Pairs really well with this guy. More Digiburst shenanigans. You have Lilamon for Digiburst. Uh, all right. Once again, I'm sorry that I'm not going too in depth, but I'm trying to make this quick because it's already been 40 minutes. Uh, nothing too crazy here. Once again, I, I can't, there's not too much to talk about with green because all the green lists are the same. This with different choices of megas. Um, like they have obviously like you can play weird numbers in green uh, um, just to like increase your power against Omnimon Alter S decks or for more board swarming sometimes you want to play the uh, tamers I personally I'm in the camp that I feel like you don't need tamers in green but that's before uh, Hercules Kabuterimon came out I could change my tune when I play it because a lot of these guys are three to evolve uh, beforehand you had a lot of download green so you wouldn't need tamers to give you more memory um, but this guy, I mean, tamers are probably good now. So there's that. Uh, let's take a look here. Of course you have the new blocker. So you have more blockers. If like this guy's playing six blockers. So like these decks are kind of crazy because they have a lot more defensive controlling and offensive capabilities. So they have the full package. Um, and like now two more level sevens. Like we, we all knew that once green got a level seven, thanks to this evolution card, it would have been broken. And like, it's looking like that's the case. Green being, able, being, green being the most dominant deck in the format for what, like three formats in a row now? <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, like, I guess red was more dominant. I mean, red and green were like neck and neck most of the time. Only one Nidhogg, but I, I get it. Like you have so much draw potential because you have so many free evolution drops in, uh, in green. So you don't actually have to play high counts of anything when it comes to green, except for like the cards that you need to evolve to give you more draw. Like the tech cards, you can play very low counts. But this guy's going full three, four, three, uh, Sarasmon and Nidhogmon with two of the Mega Gargamon. Um, so this man's all about control, nothing but control. Now the question is, do you what's what's better? Do you want to play the full control with Nidhog and um, and Sarasmon? Or do you want to play Nidhogg as a random tech? Is it even good as a random tech if you're not playing Sarasmon? Is it worth playing with Kabu Terimon? Uh, this guy's playing Titamon with Kabu Terimon. That's surprising. Maybe just to turbo out into Chaosmon. I can see that. Um, I'm not really sure if you need to turbo out into Chaosmon though. Because Chaosmon... What does Chaosmon really do for you, right? I mean, obviously you can attack unsuspended Digimon, but... Kabuterimon can suspend them and then attack them and then usually be strong. Well, Kabuterimon is hard to make strong because if you're using Digiburst, you're going to be getting rid of your evolution sources. So you're, you're probably maxing out 12,000 power. But that's why you have this guy. Uh, so, I, should, I mean, I'm not seeing an issue. All right. And last but not least for the greens. Uh, once it loads, there we go. 
Uh, oh, this one's interesting. This is actually a different list. It's got Imperial Dramon. And Imperial Dramon with Chaos Mon, Kabutari Mon. This is a very different list. Uh, Alright, cool. Um, but is there anything really that interesting about it? Just another Piercer. It's got Flower Cannon. So this is more this is more of a classic version of green, but with the new megas. Okay. Interesting. Alright, let's take a look at the hybrid to close out this video. Once again, the hybrids are always so iffy because what 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 makes a hybrid? Oh, luckily there's not very many hybrids either. Looks like there's probably gonna be closer to 10. And it looks like these hybrids are actually kind of interesting. I do th I, I have heard of a red shine gray on this, so that might be in the hybrid area. And I'm actually really interested in seeing how Red Shine Grey Mono works. Um, red does have, I mean, yellow's really turbo now because you have two one drops, one of them being a blocker. So I'm not really sure what the benefit is outside of playing cards like Gaia Force as your removal option, uh, which once again, it could sometimes be just worth it on its own. Uh, but it also gives you options. I mean, like when you're playing Red Shine Grey Mon, you have access to almost every yellow seven in the game. Uh, You've got the Chaos Mon, and you have access to Omnimon and Alter S. So it gives you more level 7 potential, but like when you're playing Shine Greymon, you don't have that kind of deck space. Hmm. This is, this is a weird list. I have no idea what's going on here. Okay, so he's playing the baby level 3s just to use the option cards. Okay. What does this option card do? I don't know. Let's find out. Is it a new one? It is a new one. It's this guy. Trident Revolver. Delete one of your opponents if you want 6,000 DP or less. Then you may play one Tamer card with a memory cost 4 or less from your hand. Oh, so it's a deletion card plus you play a Tamer, which is actually pretty cool in Shine. Uh, but he's not playing Shine. He's just playing Tamers because they're strong, which I get. <laughs> I understand. Uh, lots of recovery cards. Four Magna Andromons, two Seraphimons. Uh, wow, four Holy Waves. Uh, this card puts a Digimon on your board and recovers it. This is like a this is like a mega. Oh, this is a weird list. I really like this list actually. Okay, let's, let's break this list down because this is actually really interesting. Don Devimon. I was actually talking about this on the first stream we had testing set four with Carlos. Um, Don Devimon feels like a really cool mega to hard drop because you can hard drop it, and now you're every time your opponent attacks your security at least once per turn, you they also lose security, so they can't attack you unless they risk something themselves. And if this card gets destroyed, it's hand disruption. So your opponent has to be really careful about destroying the card because then they're going to be losing resources in their hand. Sometimes when it gets to late game, it's not bad, but early game, just dropping this right away is really, really cool. Um, of course, you have Puppamon to, to, you know, um, stall, you know, make your opponent not able to attack you. So this is like a mega list. Oh, this is really crazy, actually. You have four Magna Angelmons to recover. This guy also recovers as well. And then Magna Angelmon can evolve into this guy to reduce DP. Um while also being just stronger in general. Not really sure why he's playing this. I guess it's just another removal option. But it's a, it's a six drop removal option. It's not too bad. He's playing a random one of Misty Mon too. So I mean like it's, I get it. Uh, this is a weird list, but I kind of like it. It's like super duper recover stall. Uh, but with like Don Devimon as a backup like disruptor, which is really strong. I think this deck is really cool. I don't know how good it is because it looks like a mess. Uh, but the concept is there and it had to and it won something and what it won we're not too sure but it won something i'm actually gonna you know i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna i'm gonna save this i'm gonna save this one hold on guys this is this is this is this is going in the backlogs i'm gonna have to work around with that later all right moving on <laughs> so this is the, oh yeah this is the red shine gray i was talking about so you play the rise gray and you play this guy uh which uh silphy it's not bad it's not bad deck. I, I just don't really get it. <laughs> uh, I just don't get it. Like, I guess because you have this card, you have all the gray shenanigans. So this card, if you guys don't remember, like me, who also does not remember, uh, you may suspend this tamer to game. Okay, so when is Digimon with Greymon in attack? So, okay, so it's just plus one memory, but it also, this is one of the better cards, probably one of the better memory gainers in the game because it gives you the whole two or less you start your memory at three but then you can also every time you attack with a gray mon once per turn uh you get to just gain a memory so you're almost guaranteed to start your turn with four memory if you if you play this card it's one of the best cards in the game if you have if you have access to it so when you pair with shine gray mon it's not that bad um which is why i'm surprised this is not like a gray mon <laughs> he's playing the three drop 
guy just because he can. But that's, I mean, I mean, I guess it's fine. You get the turbo out into your level fives faster. Uh, it's actually not bad when you're looking to just evolve into your rise. Uh, but if at the same time, why play this if your goal is rise Greymon to use it to play Tamers? I, I still don't understand that concept at all. Because if it's Digiburst 2, this is a level 4. So you need at least a level 3 and then a level 4 to use Digiburst 2. So I, I, was, I it's just a weird concept to me. Of course, you're playing Galamon because Galamon is really ridiculous when you have Red Tamers. But it's not a Greymon. It's an interesting list. I'm not too sure how I feel about it. But it looks like fun, and I, I want to try it. So once again, I'm saving this in the Digi Spank Bank. There we go. Moving on. Blue and green rookie rush with Puppetmon, and ooh, they're playing Skull Greymon as well. So once again, Champion Rush be is becoming more of a thing, and I kind of love it. Uh, of course, in this case, there's only two champions, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of loving, I'm kind of loving the deck, even though I'm not a huge rookie rush fan. Uh, the decks are looking pretty cool. I do like that they have XVMon to restand, and that they're playing these one drops, uh, just to give you more draw power and also more power in general to avoid Omnimon Ultra S. So it's just an evolution of the meta, of the meta, which I can only appreciate. Uh, oh, that's not a deck list. Here are the deck list. All right, purple boys. All right, what's purple boys got? Oh, this is the purple yellow decks, dude. Do you please? This is what I'm talking about earlier. You just splash in a Lucemon, and all of a sudden it's a purple yellow hybrid deck. Uh, but this is really cool. It's playing the Mastemon version with Bielzemon, which I'm surprised about. But because I like the Anubismon a lot more, because you can attack the same turn <laughs> you use it. But uh, Mastemon, what it does is that you can both players lose a security card, and then you get to summon a level four or less yellow or purple Digimon. So you summon the Mastemon, you summon the this guy from your trash to recover the the guy you just lost, to recover the security you just lost. Uh, is that better than just attacking on the same turn? It's debatable. Because you're not actually recovering. At this point, you're just saying minus one security to your opponent, while with Anubismon, you're recovering and also being able to attack at the same time. So it's a plus one, minus one, right? But this is just a a zero minus one if that makes sense because you're not able to attack the same turn and it's four memory as opposed to three which is what anubismon is so eh. and anubismon works better with night rage which is why i like it a little bit more i don't know it's 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 a tough it's it's a tough call but it's really cool nonetheless because honestly you don't care if you lose the uh the lucemon because if it goes back to the trash you just evolve into another anubismon and bring it back so and then bringing it back means you recover security again but i mean i love the idea i think it's one of the i think it's one of the coolest decks to come out of set four honestly and i'm really like that's the one i want to play but we'll do more testing to figure out if it's worth playing or not hmm purple green i don't get it <laughs> why is he doing this uh just some random green cards for power so it's like rookie rush purple but with random green stuff too you know what that looks fine to me that looks a-ok -okay in my book Moving on, um, green again, but they splash in <laughs> Imperial Javon, and now all of a sudden it's a hybrid deck. Whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You have you have this guy as well, which is cool. Um, it Hogmon with a Jammer. I'm not really seeing the synergy here, honestly. They're just really good cards, so you play them in the same deck because you can. And you know what? That's fine with me. <laughs> I will take it. All right, so this is another yellow red deck, but it's not Shine Greymon. He's just playing random red cards with high power to abuse good red, good red option cards. So, oh, okay, it is Shine Greymon red. Okay, so this card alone makes me rethink about Shine Greymon red because you are spending six memory to play down a tamer and also destroy a Digimon uh, at the cost of playing red cards in your deck. Is that worth? I'm not too sure, but it's really cool. Especially if you're doing this, what this deck is doing, which is the seven drop shenanigans. He's just playing a bunch of really good level five Digimon uh, that can evolve into Shine Greymon, um, which is which is pretty. And just playing a whole ton of dude. Look at this deck. Actually, look at this deck. If your opponent ever attacks security, they're dying. <laughs> like, look at all the cards. Unless they have these in the security, or I guess arguably Shakoman, like something good is happening. Whether they, you get to trigger a decent option a card, except for this card. Uh, whether they get to trigger a decent uh, option card, uh, or have a really strong Digimon they're attacking into, or give you a Tamer. 
This is really funny. I don't like it that much, but it's really cool. I like it a lot. I think it's really interesting. Um, it's not my favorite list by, by any means, but I think it's a really cool list. Uh, let's take a look here. More green. What's the... Oh, he's playing... Ma oh, guys, watch out. Davis makes you a hybrid deck. <laughs> Shout out. But once again, I should probably shout them out. DCG Review for doing all this hard work, making this easy for me to just look at deck lists is really appreciated. So shout out to them as always. But I'm in DCG Review, if I can make one or two suggestions, uh, could you vet what is a hybrid list? Maybe, maybe give you like stronger reasonings for being a hybrid because playing a tamer that isn't the same color as your deck shouldn't make the deck a hybrid list honestly but that's just me also if you could do the same thing but for the english side uh some american meta that could be cool some uh some english meta that'd be nice another one of these uh purple yellow decks but because they have used lucimon it's a yellow deck uh it's a hybrid deck i mean not really seeing what makes this good honestly standard purple but with Bielz but with Bielzamon. Uh, Millennium on and Lucimon that you can drop for five. It's pretty okay. Uh, I guess with Jack Raids, it's easy to play this card, kind of, but I don't know. We'll see. And then last but not least, another version of uh, Purple Yellow Mason. This one's playing the Anubis Mon more, which I appreciate this. I will say though, from my personal testing, I don't think you need the Mace Demons, or at the very least, I don't think you need six Digimon that can bring Lucimon back. I do agree that you probably only need three Lucimon, but uh, because you're only going to be getting off this effect like once or twice a game, you don't need six Digimon that can do that effect. Three or four, four or five at most is probably enough. And then uh, because you had give this guy haste, you're probably going to win the game before you need to use this three or four times, honestly. So uh, the list is cool though. This is this is pretty much what I wanted. Uh, he's not playing Chimeramon. He's playing four Jax Raid, which I can appreciate. Uh, two Death Claw, which is nice. Uh, overall, pretty cool. Uh, I've been talking for nearly an hour, though, guys. My throat is killing me. So I'm gonna end the video there. This has been this has been really fun. Uh, I might have to split these up into like videos per deck instead. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. Should I make these videos shorter and just make them per color? That might be better for me. Because uh, that gives me five uploads and my throat won't hurt. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate all you guys for being here. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Drop a like on the video if you're not already. Comment down below what is your favorite card, favorite deck to come out set for. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.